Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. This is Mindy Egan. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create vibrant watercolor backgrounds using the Karen Brush Marker Pros. First, I'm going to start with some background stamping. So I am using this large stamp set. This is the Spring Blooms stamp from Honeybee Stamps. And I'm just loading this into my Misty tool. Then I'm going to bring in a piece of Fabriano Artistico watercolor paper cut to just a little bit larger than my stamp set. And I am prepping that with an anti-static powder tool. And then I'm going to ink up this entire background using Versamark ink. Then I can close the door of my Misty and stamp this down onto my cardstock. You may need to stamp this twice. The watercolor paper is kind of hard sometimes to get a good impression because it is textured. Then I'm going to sprinkle on clear embossing powder, and this is going to trap the color of the cardstock underneath. So it's going to appear white. Then I will melt that embossing powder with my heat tool. Next, I'm taking that heat embossed panel and I am going to attach it to a hard board. I actually have just a cutting board here and I'm attaching it with some blue painter's tape. I want to make sure this is secured down because I'm going to be adding a lot of water and I don't want my paper to curl or warp while I'm working on it. Now I'm going to work with what's called a wet on wet technique. So I have my markers here handy and ready to go. And first I'm going to apply just a layer of water to my background. Then I have off on the side there, I actually have just a uh, protector that I keep my cardstock in. It's just something clear and a slick surface. And I have a piece of white cardstock underneath so you can see the color. And I am scribbling on my colors. So I have 688, which is a violet blue or more of like a purple. 621 sky blue, 170 magenta red, and 166 canary. Then I am wetting a paintbrush and picking up that color off of that palette. I find this is the easiest way and the best way for me to get a blend with these Korean markers or Karen markers, mainly because if I were to color right onto the cardstock, I do struggle a lot trying to get rid of the harsh line that it may leave. So by scribbling it on a palette first and applying it to my background with that wet on wet technique, I find I get a lot better results with this. Now it makes these brushes so amazing to work with is the vibrancy of their color. They come in a pen format and they have kind of a brush tip to them or a marker tip to them, but the colors are so vibrant and they dry that way too. A lot of times with watercolor, you see that it, it dries back the color and you have to apply multiple layers. But with these Karen markers, the vibrancy stays. So after I have kind of that background scribbled on, I'm spritzing this heavily with water, kind of moving that a little bit to help the colors blend. And then I'm going to set this off on the side to dry for a little while. It really is best if you can let it air dry, but I do speed up the process just a little bit. So while I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm going to work on a sentiment. I really want to keep the focus on this beautiful bright spring background. So I am keeping my sentiment really simple. I am using the Easter Buddies stamp set and just using this sentiment that says Happy Easter. I have a small piece of black cardstock here that I lined up my sentiment on. I'm going to prep that with an anti-static powder tool, ink up the sentiment with the Versamark ink and stamp that down onto the cardstock. Then I'm going to sprinkle on white embossing powder. I thought this would really pop from my colorful background. And then after I tap off all of that excess, I'm going to heat that with my heat tool. One of the really great things about Honeybee Stamps sentiment sets or any of their sets is they have coordinating dies for almost everything. So I lined up that coordinating sentiment uh, and die cut that out. And I'm going to set that off on the side for just a moment while I come back to my background. So now my background isn't completely dry yet and the way I can tell is I have some shiny spots and I could see some water pooling in areas. So I'm carefully picking up that pooling with a paper towel and then I'm going to carefully remove my painter's tape. Now my background is still damp which is why some of that cardstock is peeling up with my painter's tape. But this is also why I like to start with a larger background because then if I do rip anything I already had planned on cutting cutting this down anyway, so I'm not uh, ruining any real estate of my background. So I did help speed up that drying process. I'm moving my heat tool a lot because I don't want to remelt that embossing powder. And to flatten that, I just take a piece of copy paper, place it over the background, and run it through my die cut machine. 
Now instead of eyeballing this to trim this down, I'm just using a rectangle die out of my stash and then I can pick and choose what part of the cardstock I want for a background. Once I'm happy with that, I'll run that through the die cut machine. And this is gonna measure about four by five and a quarter and I trimmed down three other pieces of white cardstock and layered it together to create dimension to my card. Then I can attach this to a card front measuring four and a quarter by five and a half. So you could also use foam tape to add your dimension. I just really like using the cardstock in this case because it is watercolored and I wanna make sure that entire background is staying flat. Then I'm adding black foam squares to the back of my sentiment and I'm gonna attach that to the front of the card. So you're seeing a lot of this colorful background. To finish off the card, I'm gonna add just a few embellishments using my embellishment wand and the Honeybee Stamps liquid glue. I'm not actually sure what um, embellishments these are, so I will link something similar down below. And that's going to finish off my card for today. Now, if you haven't tried these Karen or Kareen Brush Marker Pros, I highly suggest it. They are such gorgeous colors. And these four colors that I listed are a great starting point because you can see all the different color variations you can get with it. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you again real soon.